Hey guys, um, well, I had some questions on my uh, restoration videos about um, you know troubleshooting electrical stuff, and um, I thought it would be beneficial maybe to make a quick video and just explain some basic troubleshooting techniques for checking the electrical system and you know your restoration, whether it be a tractor or you know a car or you know something at home even. You know this is um, maybe uh, be helpful to somebody. So I thought I'd do a quick, basic kind of tutorial on how to use this thing, you know, basically what these emblems mean or these symbols mean and, and um, the information that displays on here, what it means and, and, um, and how to understand what you're, what you're seeing. Um, basically, there's a couple different kinds of meters that you can, that you can have. Um, this is a, um, a digital and it's an auto-ranging meter, they call it. Um, what that basically means is there's a little bit less settings on the dial. So if I turn it, say, to volts, it will turn on, and when I when I test it, it'll auto range to whatever I'm testing for. It kind of knows. Um, or like a, like a less expensive meter might have more dials here with more settings where you have to kind of fine tune it in. So um, they work just as well. You just, you have to kind of understand um, what that information means in order to adjust it right so that you can use it right. And then you know what what this information is on here. So that's why I thought this would come in handy. Um, there's also um, there's also the older style with the needle, and those are called analog meters, and they work exactly the same. The information is the same. They they'll tell you everything the same, um, except for there's there's a needle, and you have to understand the different charts on the on the display and what they mean, how they correspond, and if it's set right, and if it's if you're using it right, you know. Um, uh, well, basically, on on a multimeter, on any multimeter, you're gonna have you're gonna have um, emblems like this. You have the um, V's, which are voltage, and then you got like the squiggly line, which would be AC. So if you're testing like at home, um, 120 volts, you would use this setting here. You got the V with this dash line, which everybody should know that's DC. So if you're testing a battery or or something that's that's DC voltage and with a DC power supply, you would you would use this, you know, this setting. Um, then you have you have these two emblems here, a little sound wave thing, and then this is, looks like a little horseshoe. These are for testing continuity. Um, this is basically just a beeper. It's gonna it's gonna give you an audible sound if you have a a short or a, you know a complete circuit. Um, this is an ohms emblem, and that's gonna tell you the exact resistance of that circuit. So. They're both going to test continuity. This one's going to give you the inf more information. This one's just basically a beeper that's going to sound if it, if it has a complete circuit. Um, this emblem here is for testing diodes. Um, this emblem here is for testing capacitors. Um, and then you got these A's here. And then the, again, they have a, the uh, squiggly line, which would be for testing um, the amps in an um, AC circuit. And then this would be for testing the amps in a DC circuit. Um, these two here are the only ones that require you to usually change your meter probe. Um, you're, most of the time, you're never going to use these four over here on this side, ever. Um, this is basically for testing bench equipment, and AC is like kind of, you know, dangerous. You, you know, I, I hardly ever use, you know, that. But it's helpful to know what it is and why you would use it and, and what it's there for. Um, Normally, you're pretty much always going to leave your meter leads um, as common and um, in volts and you know ohms. Um, different meters, you may have to move them around, but read what it says here. Pretty much, they're all going to stay the same. Some might have a couple more, like you might have you know two separate ones for your amps, or or maybe another one for something um, something else. But basically, they all work the same. Um, this is a fluke meter. This is a little bit more um, of an expensive meter than. Um, than most, this one was over hundred dollars. Where you know you can get a lot of meters for a lot less than that. You know, forty dollars or, or so, even cheaper. Harbor Freight. <laughs> but um, anyway, before you use it, one thing I would definitely recommend is you know check your meter leads. Make sure that they're not nicked. There's no bare wire showing because you're testing electrical stuff and you don't want to get shocked. Um, you actually should replace them you know, once in a while, maybe once a year if you're using it a lot. These are brand new. I uh, actually replaced them. I don't know a few months ago. Um, but anyway, um, so, so again, 
Um, so you got volts, and you got this squiggly line, which means AC. Now AC, this is the si uh, symbol for AC. That's a, called a sine wave, and that's alternating current. And it's usually used in like a house, and so, you know, 120 volts or more it could be 240. Um, this is the dangerous stuff, so that's the stuff that you know you're uh, got to be careful with. Um, there's no polarity. The wire colorings are usually black and white. Um, the black being the hot side, white being the neutral. Um, there's no polarity, but you, but black is kind of like the side that you're going to get shocked from. Let's measure for AC voltage. Um, that's zero volts. That's 120 volts. And there's no polarity. DC has got this emblem on the meter. It looks like a bunch of dashed lines and that's you know direct current which is what they use in you know a battery um, you know could be 12 volts could be 6 volts could be 24 volts could be connected to a power supply um, that's DC so or a small battery the red is the positive and the black is always the negative in the DC circuit that's kind of the standard and now let's measure for DC volts the meters at the DC and there is polarity, 12.4 volts DC. Um, then the next one, this is where people maybe get a little confused. Um, this is ohms, that's that emblem that I showed you. And that's for checking resistance or continuity. Um, it's a continuous path, you might want to check in a wire or, you know, check a circuit, you know, check the contact points. You know, could be points on a tractor, could be a switch, uh, could be anything. But anything in that circuit, you know, if there's no voltage on it, you're going to check ohms. And so it, that's actually a good point. If you're testing for continuity and you want to make sure you have a complete circuit and you have good grounds or whatever, make sure that that circuit you're testing isn't connected to any power sources. And then, you know, then you can test with this meter here. And what you'd want to do is, you know, disconnect you know, one or both ends of that wire, and then put your meter leads across it, and then you're going to test it. So, let's see. So, the sound wave, like I said, doesn't give you much information other than it's a complete circuit. It's going to make that little beeping noise. The ohm signal is going to do the same thing. There's no noise, but it's going to tell you something. It's going to tell you the resistance that it sees so right now it's seeing 2.5 ohms. That's pretty much a dead short on touching these leads together. So what does that mean? And how do you know what that's telling you? Well, I drew this little line here. It kind of gives you a timeline. And um, basically, if you think of it like this, zero ohms, which is all the way on this end of the spectrum, that's a complete short, like these meter leads are being touched together. That's a complete short. Should be even lower than this, rises too. But anyway, so that's a complete short. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, it's got OL. There's on my meter here. And that means open load, which is a complete open. So that's a complete open. Um, so along that line, there's different there's different things that it can tell you. It could tell you it could give you a K, um, it could give you an M. And, um, or it could just give you some kind of a number. So what does that mean? Um, well, K is a thousand ohms or more, all right? So you, got, uh, you could have a thousand ohms or you could have 999 ohms. So you could have 1K or 999 K, and that's how much ohms of resistance are in that, in that circuit that you just read. Or if you have an M, that could be a million. It could be even more than a million. Um, and if you if you're seeing M on your meter and this meter is saying M, you basically have an open, and you should troubleshoot as though you have a broken wire or, or a really bad connection, a ton of rust or something. Um, that's the same as an open. Um, a K, I mean, it's like a could be a pinch wire or it could be uh, just a really bad connection. You know, it's got continuity, but what is it telling you? What does it have? It's, it doesn't have very good continuity. Um, typically in a wire, you're going to be troubleshooting in this section. If you're, if you're seeing like K 
two or five or even ten, you're probably fine. That's very not very many ohms. That's pretty much close to zero in the spectrum of things here. And um, you know, so you might use this meter uh, to test a fuse or to check a wire or to test for a ground, which basically I went over. Uh, let's measure for continuity. Here's a wire with high continuity or low resistance. 3.5 ohms. Here's a wire with high resistance or low continuity. 2.2k ohms or 2,200 ohms. So anyway, that's the first part of this that I wanted to, to discuss. And uh, the second part do another page and there is your amps so to use an amp this is where you would move this probe here you know you move it out of the volts over to the amp side then you could turn it to amps AC or DC whatever you're whatever you're testing for now, how do you use this? Well, this would be to test how much draw the circuit has, how much current the circuit is either producing or is drawing. And the reason you'd want to do that is maybe you want to measure to see how much draw it has, if it keep blowing a fuse, or uh, maybe to rate something, see how much of a fuse you would want to protect the circuit with. And this isn't something that, like, say you're doing it with on, on AC or even on DC if it's really high. Um, this is this is dangerous, so you want to be careful with this. You want to make sure you know what you're doing. Um, don't touch anything because you actually would have to insert these meter probes into the circuit and make the electricity flow through your meter. Um, normally, if you're testing a battery, you would just touch them to the battery terminal without removing anything. Um, with this, you probably have to put some alligator clips on this and connect it from one wire to the other wire. Basically, what you would be doing is um, you'd be opening the wire, maybe cutting it, and inserting these probes into the circuit so that, so if this is your circuit, this is your load, which could be maybe I put like a light or a motor. So here's the plus and negative, say it's connected to a battery. You would cut, say the positive side, and you would insert the positive lead on this side and the negative lead on this side. And um, then you would read what, how many amps it was drawing. You know, it might draw, you know, 0.8 or, or you know, one or two amps or whatever um, and it's going to tell you that it does most meters have a, um, a maximum range of 10 amps um, they can't go over that you'll blow a fuse in the meter they're not unless you have a very expensive meter you're not going to be able to test any any higher than that um, you know without damaging your your meter but um but anyway that's the difference that's uh that's amps and that is how you would use that. Like I said, your ch chances are you're probably never going to need to do this. Um, I can't think of the last time I've needed to do that. Um, generally speaking, you're going to not even be using any of those guys. You're going to be over here using ohms or just checking for voltage 